China just dropped a bombshell in space. Astronauts aboard China's Tiangong station have just pulled off a groundbreaking photosynthesis experiment in orbit, one that could reshape the future of space exploration. Imagine this, a future where astronauts can produce their own oxygen and rocket fuel while traveling across distant planets. Sounds like science fiction? Well, China is turning that into reality. And even NASA and Elon Musk might be feeling a little jealous of this one. So, what exactly is this breakthrough tech? Could it help China leap ahead of the US in space? Let's break it down on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Orbiting 400 kilometers above Earth, two space stations from the world's top space agencies are currently in operation. NASA's ISS and China's Tiangong Space Station, run by CNSA. The problem is, the ISS has been in orbit for nearly 27 years, witnessing decades of Earth's history. And it's nearing the end of its life, with plans to deorbit around 2030. Meanwhile, Tiangong is still relatively new, having been operational for about four years. In theory, it could continue running for another 20 years or more, quietly shifting the long-term advantage in China's favor. And China isn't stopping there. According to the China Academy of Space Technology, speaking at the 74th International Astronautical Congress, China plans to expand Tiangong from three modules to six in the coming years. Once completed, the expanded station will weigh around 180 tons. It's not just about size either. China is also making research breakthroughs aboard Tiangong that the rest of the world can't afford to ignore. On July 14th, China successfully launched a cargo mission to its Tiangong space station using the Tianzhu-9 spacecraft and a Long March 7 rocket, a combo that's proving just as reliable as SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Dragon. The flight delivered 7.2 tons of cargo, including equipment, lab supplies, and 1.65 tons of food for the Shenzhou-20 crew. But hidden among that cargo was something far more interesting. China sent up special chemical catalysts designed to help convert carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and ethylene, all at room temperature and normal pressure. This kind of experiment could be a game changer for deep space exploration, allowing astronauts to produce oxygen and even rocket fuel while in orbit. And you can bet Elon Musk is watching closely. After all, he's the guy who wants to live on Mars. So what exactly is this experiment and how does it work? Well, China calls it artificial photosynthesis. Unlike any traditional methods that require high temperatures and tons of energy, this technology is super efficient and highly adaptable. It can even be tweaked to produce other valuable compounds like formic acid to make sugars or methane for rocket fuel. This kind of flexibility, it's a total game changer for future space missions where resource efficiency is everything. And we're not exaggerating when we say that. According to China's state broadcaster CCTV, the system mimics natural photosynthesis using engineered physical and chemical processes. It pulls in carbon dioxide from a sealed spacecraft or even from other planets' atmospheres and turns it into oxygen and carbon-based fuel. Think of it like having a tiny high-tech forest inside your spaceship, one that can keep astronauts alive and help power their journey through space. CCTV also says this breakthrough will provide crucial technical support for human survival and exploration in deep space, potentially helping us go farther than ever before. So, yeah, China's ambition to dominate space isn't just talk. This breakthrough marks a major step towards sustaining life in future missions like their crude moon landing planned before 2030, and even deeper space goals after that. The breakthrough in artificial photosynthesis aboard China's Tiangong space station goes far beyond just making oxygen or fuel. It tackles one of the biggest challenges in space exploration, resource scarcity. Now, the ISS has run similar experiments using electrolysis to split water into breathable oxygen and hydrogen using solar energy. But here's the problem. That process eats up nearly a third of the station's power. That's not ideal for long-term missions to the Moon or Mars, where both space and energy are at a premium. In contrast, China's approach with artificial photosynthesis is a real game-changer. Instead of heavy energy use, it relies on direct sunlight and semiconductor catalysts to convert CO2 and water into oxygen and ethylene, a flammable hydrocarbon that can power rocket engines though it's less commonly used than RP1 or methane due to its lower energy density and trickier storage. Still, 
ethylene can be chemically converted into more useful fuels like methane through hydrogenation. Even better, this system works smoothly in microgravity and can be tuned to produce other compounds too, like methane or formic acid. It's basically like bringing a tiny, super-efficient factory into space, allowing astronauts to produce their own resources, on site. According to Katharina Brinker, a catalysis expert from the University of Bremen, this tech could revolutionize life support systems, making future moon bases or Mars missions much more feasible and sustainable, while cutting down on costly resupply runs from Earth. So, could this tech actually help China overtake the U.S. in the space race? Well, while there's no denying that this experiment holds great potential, based on currently available data, and the challenges of space environments, this technology still faces several limitations. First, the artificial photosynthesis device uses semiconductor catalysts inside a drawer-like unit. But due to the limited space aboard the experimental module, roughly 10 to 20 square meters, the amount of CO2 and water it can process in each cycle is very small. That means the oxygen and ethylene output is also low, likely not enough to meet the continuous needs of a crew or propulsion system during long-duration missions. A module like Wentian, for example, only has about 17 square meters of usable floor space, so it's difficult to scale up this system to produce tens or hundreds of liters of oxygen per day, or kilograms of ethylene, quantities that large-scale missions would require. Second, although the system operates at room temperature and normal pressure, Microgravity can impact the performance of semiconductor catalysts. These materials, like nitrides and other compounds, require sunlight and even exposure to CO2 and water. But in microgravity, controlling the flow and distribution of fluids and gases is difficult, which leads to uneven reactions. Water and CO2 may not spread uniformly inside the device, which can lower catalytic efficiency. While the 12 experiments conducted on Tiangong have reportedly handled this issue to some extent, no public data has been released on the actual efficiency, such as what percentage of CO2 was converted to ethylene. If the catalytic efficiency is low, for example, under 1%, like some Earth-based systems, the amount of oxygen and ethylene generated would be too small to replace existing systems, such as electrolysis used aboard the ISS. Third, and perhaps most important, while ethylene is a flammable hydrocarbon and could theoretically be used as rocket fuel, converting it into practical fuels like methane or other liquid propellants requires additional complex chemical reactions. These would need extra equipment and energy. In the limited space of a space station module, integrating such systems would be extremely difficult. Ethylene needs to be hydrogenated, combined with hydrogen, to produce methane or similar fuels. But producing hydrogen in space is not easy and the extra reactions would require dedicated hardware, more space, and more power, which the small Tiangong module likely cannot support without major upgrades. So, in summary, producing fuel directly in orbit using this experiment is technically possible, but only at a very small scale. It won't be enough to support deep space missions just yet. However, if the technology continues to advance, then experiments like this could become critical stepping stones toward that goal. And for now, it's clear that China still has a long way to go before catching up with NASA or SpaceX. Meanwhile, Elon Musk has recently made more positive moves that show SpaceX is continuing to make solid progress. Just yesterday, Elon Musk posted a tweet that got fans super excited. He said, Shortly before the next flight, I will do a live technical update on Starship, going over progress to date in engineering, production, launch plans for the future. That means we might be getting another live stream soon, where he'll spill all the latest details about SpaceX, Starbase, and upcoming flights. He could even talk about major updates like the progress at Massey site, or reveal specs and plans for the long-awaited Starship Block 3. It's definitely something to look forward to, so make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. I'm aiming for 150,000 subs, and your support means a lot. Right now, the relationship between Donald Trump and Elon Musk is still pretty complicated. It's like they're both helping and holding each other back at the same time. Recently, the Trump administration has been considering rolling back regulations meant to protect the environment and public safety during commercial rocket launches, changes that companies like SpaceX have been pushing for for years. A draft executive order, reviewed by ProPublica, 
is currently circulating among federal agencies. It instructs Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy to use all existing authorities to eliminate or expedite environmental impact reviews tied to launch licenses. Over time, this order could also push states to approve more frequent launches, or even more launch sites, also known as spaceports, along their coastlines. If approved, this could be a major step toward dismantling federal oversight that Musk, who has often clashed with the FAA over launch delays, has long fought against. After all, commercial rocket launches have been booming in recent years. So, while there's tension between them, this move could actually give SpaceX even more room to grow. However, just a few days later, on July 22nd, the Trump administration made a surprising move. They announced an expanded search for partners to help build the Golden Dome missile defense system, drawing interest from Amazon's Project Kuiper and major defense contractors. This came at a time when rising tensions with Elon Musk were already threatening SpaceX's dominance in the program. The Golden Dome is an ambitious missile defense initiative proposed by President Donald Trump and officially unveiled in an executive order on January 27, 2025. Inspired by Israel's Iron Dome, but on a much larger scale, the goal is to protect U.S. territory from advanced missile threats, including ballistic missiles, hypersonic weapons, and cruise missiles. SpaceX, in partnership with Palantir and Enderil, has proposed building a satellite network of 400 to over 1,000 satellites to detect and track missile launches. These would be surveillance-class satellites designed to pinpoint missile trajectories and targets in real time. With a proven track record, over 9,000 Starlink satellites launched, and deep experience in working with government contracts, SpaceX still holds a strong advantage, especially in handling launch operations for key components of the Golden Dome.